Good morning, everybody, and thanks for uh, joining our webinar this morning or afternoon or evening, depending on uh, uh, where you're located. We have customers from around the world, the globe, uh, joining us today. Uh, my name is Brad Horn. I'm the uh, CEO and one of the co-founders of PTS, Portable Technology Solutions, and I have Howard Heckman with me this morning, or Howie as we call him. Um, and he's one of our lead uh, software developers, and he's really uh, focuses in on our RFID and our IoT technology. Um, just going to give you the agenda here. Uh, we'll start off. It's a, I, I kind of hijacked this webinar from Howie. Howie uh, does our Getting Started Clearstream webinars, but we've uh, done a, a pilot or two with BLE, and um, we've seen some amazing uh, stuff taking place with the technology and what it can do. And I, I don't know, we just got really excited about it. So we want to start talking about it more to our customers and our future customers of what's possible with it. And um, that's what I'm going to be doing this morning, uh, trying to pass along some of my enthusiasm for this technology and how it's going to be integrated with Clearstream in our net upcoming 5.0 release. So anyway, um, for those that don't know anything about PTS, I'm going to start off just telling you a little bit about what we do and why we do it. And then I'm going to move into where Clearstream is today with our 4.1 release and how it works with UHF technology. Then I'm going to um, tell you what I know about beacons. I'm not an engineer. Um, uh, so I'm going to break it down for the uh, guys like me out there or ladies like me who just aren't really uh, as technical as maybe the engineers are. And I'm going to talk in uh, layman's terms of how the technology works and why we like it. And then I'm going to show you a, a vendor managed inventory uh, scenario and you know how beacons can be used in that. And then how he's going to get into the nuts and bolts and uh, give you a live demo of Clearstream and how it's going to integrate with Beacon technology. He's going to get a little more into the weeds, so uh, make sure you stick around for that. So first off, uh, you know, PTS, why are we founded? What's our philosophy? Um, we really started off in 2000 delivering mobile data collection software for folks with not a lot of a budget. They knew they had a need to do something. They had to collect data and get it into their pre-existing system. Um, database software system, maybe it's just an Excel sheet, and they, uh, you know, didn't. They wanted to evolve or change as they went along, and uh, we developed a product called Tracer. And since then, we've, uh, you know, kept on developing and offering more solutions. And uh, you know, we've released Clearstream. So Tracer has evolved into Tracer Plus. Um, hold on, I'm just going to switch from my headset here to. A, so Tracer has evolved from Tracer to Tracer Plus. We now support not just uh, Palm, which is actually a dead product as we all know, but we've moved to from Windows Mobile to Android to iOS. So really what we're trying to say here is customers that have uh, started with us, many of them are still with us from the early 2000s, and now they're taking advantage of all these great new technologies, including UHF, RFID, um, barcode features that weren't available, WAN, Wi-Fi, you know, any, the IoT um, we're coming out with shortly um, with some of our sensor uh, uh, tags. So there's a lot of great stuff that we're developing all the time, and we're rolling it constantly into our software. So if you're a licensee of our software, you're going to be able to take advantage of these features. And that's what we try to, you know, convey to our customers during the sales processes and our training that, you know, just because you start out small, maybe you're just barcoding, you can evolve into, uh, you know, new technologies with our software at minimal to no cost, um, just really the hardware. And uh, obviously, we're going to be talking about Clearstream today. Uh, Tracer Plus uh, is on the mobile side, and we have fixed RFID software that's actually growing into fixed IoT software. Clearstream uh, takes the same philosophy as we've had all along, make it something easy for anyone, no programming involved, to create fixed RFID applications. And as IoT has evolved, we're starting to uh, integrate more technologies. And uh, you know, Beacons is really um, something that's exciting us. and uh, like I said, we've uh, done a, a couple uh, pilots, and uh, they're going swimmingly. And we just think it's time to, you know, start uh, sounding the bells and letting everybody know how great it is. So, with that I'll move on to Clearstream today. For those that don't know about Clearstream, Clearstream is a free-to-try fixed RFID software. Anyone can download it and uh, configure it to basically stream, that's what we call a clear stream, stream data into their pre-existing systems and make things happen based on how that data gets into your database. 
Um, you don't have to be a programmer. We're constantly rolling new features into it. You can multi-thread data to multiple databases. Um, you can, in our new releases, you can be able to send emails, alerts, and all sorts of stuff. And you can go as simple as sending data into an Excel sheet, or you can go into you know, a pre-existing API that you need to access, such as a, you know, a Salesforce or maybe some ERP system. Um, those are the things we're doing all day long. And the idea is to make it budget friendly so anyone can take advantage of this. Making it free to try, you can get trial software, set it up with some trial hardware and make sure it works for you. And we have a team here that's dedicated to um, making sure your prototypes and your pilots are successful. Now, today we're gonna talk about beacons. Um, beacons are uh, some exciting stuff that uh, you know we're hearing about and I'm sure most of you have heard the buzz. But I'm going to try to break it down in this slide why we're excited about it. If you're familiar with UHF RFID, you know that the big problem or the uh, downside of UHF RFID is sometimes the read range. Um, with a passive tag, meaning the tag is not sending off a signal, we're actually using a reader to tickle that tag and have that tag get excited and send the signal back to the reader or the antennas powered by the reader. Um, we can get like a 20 to 30 foot read range which has its advantages. And we'll see in this demo, you can see in the top left, the lobby entrance. We'll track employees coming in and out of this lobby. Um, maybe we'll track equipment and make sure it doesn't go through this particular entrance. Maybe we wanna know where inventory is throughout, you know, if something leaves through an exit, or you know, maybe we want to uh, keep track of inventory on our particular rack. Those are the great scenarios for a fixed RFID system. Making sure a trailer is correctly uh, you know, loaded and nothing goes on to that trailer that's not on that order. Those are the types of scenarios we're doing with the fixed RFID. Now beacons is a, a different technology in that the actual beacon has a battery and I'll have the slide in the future showing what these beacons look like. But the beacon is sending off a signal and with a gateway, which we'll see the big, those big swaths of red, they're covering 100 meters. So you can get a beacon that will put out a 100 meter signal. So essentially, by setting up a few gateways, we can triangulate and get locations of our high value assets. So maybe we wanna know where our workers are and they're wearing a beacon, or we wanna know where our forklifts are, they're wearing a beacon. That's where we see the beacons fitting in. Um, we're going to talk about a vendor managed inventory install where we see beacons as a great solution and we'll go through the pros and cons. So here's what the beacons look like. Um, you'll see here on that left picture, those are what beacons typically look like or what we have. We have a Confidex who is one of our partners in the lower uh, right of that first picture. We have an iBeacon and then we have a Blue Cat beacon. Um, that's more of a lanyard beacon that an employee can hang on. And each one of those beacons has a battery in it, and it's gonna give off a signal that's gonna allow these gateways, which we have a gateway in the middle there by Blue Epic, and then we have another gateway in the right hand with um, in the, the palm of my hand. It's a Blue Cat gateway. And those are gonna sit on your network or connect it to your cloud and gather that beacon information. Um, they're passive in that, unlike an UHF system that is actively uh, those readers are powering up the antennas and you know activating the tags this is different in that the tags are pulsing out data to the gateways and that's why we're getting that long read range so i'll just quickly go through the pros and cons as we understand them as today uhf is a great solution for something where you're tagging a lot of items um or you don't care about losing that tag so maybe it's a uh, a retail item. You really don't care about the tag walking out the door when we're sending it, selling a hundred dollar item. That 10 cent to 20 cent tag doesn't matter. So the tags are less expensive. That's an advantage of UHF. They come in all various sizes and materials. So you can get a rugged tag to put on a, you know, a high valued asset, or you can get a low cost tag to put on, you know, a retail item that you're selling. The bigger the biggest advantage of these tags is that they have unlimited life. So if your products have a shelf life, maybe you have computer assets in the field and they're gonna be out there for five to 10 years and you have thousands of them. You may not wanna put a beacon on those, or maybe you do if it's a, you know, a serviceable item, but you're gonna have an unlimited life. So that tag's never gonna die. You're not gonna to have to go change batteries. The other big advantage is you're getting high read rates. You can do thousands 
of tags in a minute. So if you are, for example, doing an incoming receiving operation and your vendors are um, tagging their material, you can do an instantaneous receipt of those materials and there could be thousands of items. The other big advantage is that you're tuning the system via the RFID reader remotely. So the reader is actually powering up and deciding how far we're gonna read. For example, is this antenna gonna read two foot because we're just putting it on a shelf and we only wanna read things on the shelf, or is this antenna gonna read 30 foot because we wanna cover this whole doorway? Now, the cons of UHF um, we hear about all the time. There's quite a bit of hardware investment. So if you have a 100,000 square foot facility and you wanted to put UHF RFID throughout that 100,000 foot square facility, you're talking about a lot of readers and a lot of antennas. Each reader is in the you know thousand to fifteen hundred dollar range. The antennas are hundred dollars. You have to you know run cables to the antennas. Um, so it's a little more complex in the setup as well. Whereas beacons, um, again, all the power is in that beacon. And the gateways are pretty simplistic. They're just passively reading things. So you can get a 100 meter range with a simple little gateway like you saw before in the pictures. And you may be able to cover that whole facility with a couple gateways, which are in the hundreds of dollars. And it's a simple ethernet connection and you put a little power to it. Some are powered over ethernet and you'll be able to cover that whole area. You know, you're getting a, a, a really good value in that setup, and that's why we're excited about it for the vendor-managed inventories and uh, solutions like uh, forklift tracking. Um, the other advantage of a beacon, which we're not going to talk about today, it's a future release in Tracer Plus, but you're going to be able to read these beacons with your consumer-grade phones because they have VLE support. So you're not going to have to buy a $1,500 reader um, to read a UHF tag. You're going to be able to use your phone. So this might be work work well for your you know remote operators or those type of solutions where you maybe have a few beacons in a location and you just need to find them. Um, the downside on beacons is obviously the tag cost. Each tag that we saw in those pictures is around $15 to $25. So you're not going to put it on a shirt that you're selling. Um, you're not may not even put it on a laptop that you're using because of the tag life. The tag lives are anywhere from three months to a year depending on how often you're sending out signals. Um, something we're learning about is the read capabilities as well. If you have a car lot with thousands of cars, you're going to have multiple gateways. And if you configure those beacons incorrectly and they're all pinging at the same time, is that going to, you know, degrade your read accuracy? I mean, the, the odds of that are pretty low because, again, the beacons are sending off the signal and we're setting up the beacons to send those signals at a certain pulse rate. So now I'm just going to talk about a vendor managed inventory and why we're excited about it in this um, scenario. Uh, first off, because it's a really simple solution. There's a really great ROI and um, it solves a, a, a big problem for those folks who are running vendor managed inventories. So the first thing, just so everybody understand what a vendor managed inventory is, that's when typically a manufacturer, in this case, a lawnmower manufacturer, supplies and keeps their inventory at their re their customers or the retail locations that they don't own. So actually they're supplying on a consignment basis product for their customers. What's the advantage of it? Well, first off, you can really maintain accurate inventory levels because you should or theoretically know when you have, say your typical supply is 30 items and your re reorder point is 10. When that you know 10th item is uh, sold, Boom, you should get a magical reorder point. Your forecasting is really accurate. You can see your inventory's level across all retail. So you're diving into the retail locations and you'll be see your instantaneous you know, inventory throughout your channel, which is going to lead to better forecasting, better manufacturing, um, you know, more optimum manufacturing. Uh, it, it is the, the pros go on and on. For the retailer, obviously, <laughs> you know, they're not buying inventory. They're only selling what they sell and, um, or buying what they sell. So that's a huge advantage for retailers and for the customer as well. So if someone's you know tight on cash flow, that retailer, you know, really shouldn't have an excuse why they're not selling or putting product on the floor. The cons, which we learned about through this uh, our first deployment, are pretty interesting. It's you're actually putting your inventory in the hands of someone that's not a, a member of your company and may not have the same objectives as you have. If your objective is to uh, tighten up your cash flow and improve your receivables, their objective may be to uh, 
float their their uh, payables a little bit more. So what they may find out is their inventory levels, even though it's supposed to be more accurate, may not be as accurate. Maybe that customer that did sold five lawnmowers to the local landscaper on a Friday doesn't report that sale to the following Friday because you know they never got around to it. You know, harmless enough, but that five days is five days of receivables for the manufacturer that it could equate to fifteen thousand dollars. Now we amplify that across five hundred stores. I mean, that's a lot of money. Um, you know, you have delays your sales out. Your audits are expensive because you are going to have to go out and do audits at your customers' locations. I mean, just you know, even if they're not doing things that aren't maybe as ethical as they should be, maybe they are just not great at keeping an accurate inventory, or their POS system isn't giving you the information you need. So you're going to have to send people out and do audits. Um, so anyway, we went through the the uh, the pros and the cons of it. This store in particular we were dealing with had a big problem. They had a bunch of stores in the field. Their inventory levels weren't accurate, which caused them rushing in the manufacturing process. You know, emergency orders. Hey, listen, we're out of lawnmowers of this type and this blade size. I need them right, you know, tomorrow because I have an order for ten. Um, that that leads to a not an efficient manufacturing process. And then you factor in that they're not reporting these things because their processes were kind of broken. So they're getting hurt by cash flow. So this customer actually came to us with this idea and uh, uh, through a resell of ours. And uh, it, it was a really novel idea. They decided that they were gonna put beacons into their lawnmowers. And then inexpensively, they were gonna send out these gateways to their retailers, they'll even give them a better price on the, the lawnmowers to save them 1%. Um, and now, daily, through our cloud server, they're getting reports of what's in every store because the beacons have that 100 meter range. They're going to see an inventory of every store every day, and it's extremely accurate. And when they sell something, what's going to happen? Well, that lawnmower is not going to be there anymore. So the the you know, manufacturer is going to have daily inventory counts as well as being able to match up their receivables or you know the invoices daily to what's being reported by their customers. We'll talk about an ROI. We're talking at 500 stores with you know average inventories of maybe 50,000 in uh, lawnmowers. Um, they're turning those cycles, those lawnmowers, four to five times a year, and now they're in you know improving their receivables by an average seven to 14 days. It pays for itself really quickly putting that little beacon in those lawnmowers. So anyway, that's our little case study of the most simplistic uh, type of uh, deployment for beacon technology. With that said, I'm gonna turn it over to Howie and Howie's gonna get into the nuts and bolts of how uh, beacon technology works. So let me just, uh, Howie, if you can take over for me. Sure, let me switch it back over myself, I guess. Then. Yeah, I would do it, Howie, but someone actually logged in with your account, so I didn't know who you were. Okay. Uh, yeah, here thanks. we go. Okay, I'm going to put myself on mute. And, and folks, please ask questions. Uh, you know, I, I kind of hijacked this from Howie, and, um, you know, he's going to get into a lot more of the technical aspects, but if you have basic questions or you know where we're going, please uh, put those into your user panel. Yeah, that's what I was gonna mention, that we'll have a question and answer pa uh, period here at the end. So if you guys have any questions with regards to what Brad had mentioned or anything that I talk about kind of here with the new features of Clearstream as well as uh, the live demo, uh, please feel free to use your question panel at the end of the webinar. But uh, with that, thanks again, Brad, for uh, switching it on over to me. I, again, thank everyone for joining us. Um, I was going to go through a little bit of uh, some of the new features that we're adding for Clearstream 5.0 and kind of give you a live demonstration of, of those features as well as just getting started with the application. Uh, so before I jump into the live demo, uh, I just have a slide here on some of the Clearstream 5.0 and future features that we're adding to the software. The first here is what we've been talking about today is support for existing beacon gateways. So allowing different manufacturers uh, gateways to send beacon data to Clearstream. And the most important thing we want to try to do there with the release is make it as easy to set up these gateways as it is to set up the UHF RFID readers into an existing system. So you can mix and match, like Brad mentioned, the different technologies within the same system. You can have your, uh, your 
BLE gateways sending the beacon data to your database as well as at different choke points that maybe where you're capturing uh, UHF or HF tags, send those to the same or different databases as well. Uh, so the configuration will be very similar between the two technologies. Uh, we'll be supporting both the iBeacon and Eddystone formats. It's a little te more technical, I guess, but different tags that use different um, formats of their data that are coming in into the Clearstream side. Uh, iBeacon is from Apple, Eddystone is from Google. Um, so we will be supporting both of those formats with Clearstream 5.0. Um, another cool feature that I'm not gonna get into too much today, but is a REST API for Clearstream. Um, this REST API will actually allow you to control the Clearstream application uh, through REST API calls or uh, representational state transfer. Really what it gives you is the ability to control the application through a web browser. Um, and what's cool about it is you can actually see in real time your tag data that all of your readers are seeing out in the field and then you can interact with that data. So it'll give Clearstream an end user kind of front end to the application so that you can do things with the tags that are being reported. So imagine a situation where you're packing a, um, uh, a package that you have to make sure you get all the contents into that package and you're scanning them with UHF or HF tags and you want to give the user at some terminal an interface to seeing that. Well, this REST API will give you the ability to customize a, a web page that then allows you to see the data that you're collecting with that fixed RFID reader. So it'll give you kind of a front end to Clearstream. Um, we also have support, and I'm going to show you this one uh, today as well, for customizable destinations. In the past, like Brad mentioned, we supported ODBC databases, uh, which include SQL Server, MySQL, Microsoft Access, and all that sort of stuff, uh, as well as Excel workbooks and text files. So you can send your tag data to any one of those. Uh, with Clearstream 5.0, we're going to allow you to set up basically endpoints for your data and customize what that data is that gets sent to the destination. So it could be something just like a text file that gets sent in an email. Um, it could be a JSON format, if any of you are familiar with web services, to a web uh, server that then is collecting that data and capturing it into some system. Uh, as well as some, we're gonna build onto that printers even to do tag printing. So maybe scan something within Clearstream that'll print to an RFID tag printer. Uh, and I'll show you the email setup uh, in just a little uh, bit, which is that SMTP there. Uh, and finally, we're looking at adding, uh, especially in these vendor managed inventory situations for a hosted cloud-based uh, um, Amazon is what we're currently using, uh, web servers for cloud-based installation. And what's cool about this is that the Clearstream application is actually hosted and your gateways for these beacons are actually pointing to that cloud server. So all of the data is getting pushed back to a cloud server that's accessible by you to see that data and inter interact with that data. So we're gonna be building onto that kind of uh, uh, platform, different features for uh, reporting of your data, uh, viewing the tags that are out in the field, using that REST API and things like that. But it's a way of actually really easing the deployment. Um, in that situation, all you really need to do is take a gateway, a beacon gateway, and uh, point its data to this cloud server that's running Clearstream. And you could deploy these things anywhere that has an internet connection and now all of the beacons that are being collected by those different gateways will be reported back to this cloud server for, for review. Um, so I won't be going into that, but you can see kind of a screenshot in the back there just of uh, the, the tag data that's being collected at this cloud server. And you can see uh, that data being um, captured from all of the different gateways out in the field. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna go into a live kind of demo of the software. I'm just gonna start with the setup of a UHF reader so that you can see, uh, for people that are just starting, you can see how easy it is to get up and running with a UHF RFID reader. Uh, and for anybody that's already familiar with that, you'll see then how I'll grow into the beacon setup. Uh, so you can see a beacon installation as well using Clearstream. So I'm gonna hop out of the PowerPoint. <clears throat> um, and now Brad had mentioned that uh, Clearstream is available for a free trial. So if you go to our website at clearstreamrfid.com, you can go to the download page there and download the application in a trial mode. The trial mode uh, simply restricts you to 30 days of using the application, but you can use all of the features that I show you today for that, the length of that trial period. Um, so I do like to mention that just to encourage anybody that wants to take a look at this uh, to go to the website and download the software and go ahead and give it a shot there with uh, both UHF, HF, and uh, now Beacon um, technology. <clears throat> Uh, after you download and install the software, you'll be presented with this screen here. Uh, this screen is 
the uh, configuration screen of Clearstream. And the concept behind how this application works is you have a source of your tag data on the left-hand side here. And on the right-hand side, you have a destination of where you want to send that tag data. So typically, the source is set up to be a fixed RFID reader, and the destination is set, uh, is set up to go to some location where you want your tag data captured every time it's read by that reader. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and set up a very simple install of that so you can see that actually happening and see, see how quickly that, is, uh, that can be configured. So first thing, I just wanted to mention that when you install Clearstream, you will be provided with a sample database. And that's what this is here. It's a Microsoft Access database. Uh, it has a table in it called RFID Tag List, which has all of the fields of data that a typical RFID reader will capture every time a tag is scanned, such as the EPC value, uh, an antenna name, date timestamp, and so on. Every bit of information that's captured by that reader can be populated into this database. So after you install the software, you will have this Access database um, available. And I like to use this for the demo just in case you guys go ahead and download the software. You can go ahead and actually use this database as well. And you can set up exactly what I do today and you can see it working on your side. So you can see right now there's no tag data. It's a blank database table at this moment. There's nothing in this. And I want to populate this uh, table with UHF RFID tags. So what I'm going to do is jump back over to my Clearstream configuration here. And on the source side, I'm going to go ahead and select RFID because I want to use a, an RFID scanner as my source of data that's then going to be sent to the destination. So first thing, I'm going to configure that destination, which is, again, that Microsoft Access database. So I'm going to go ahead and select ODBC. I'm going to select that Clearstream RFID sample database. You'll see this in the dropdown just as I have it here. You'll see Clearstream RFID sample. If you go ahead and select that, you'll then be prompted with all of the tables in that database. So if you're using your own database, uh, SQL Server, MySQL, it's going to be the same type of setup. You select the database, and then you select the table you'd like to go to. If you wanted to do something like Microsoft Excel or something like that, you would just select it as a destination or even a text file here in the template I'll show you in just a minute. Uh, but for today, I'm going to go back to this ODBC, which is at any type of database, Access, Oracle, MySQL, anything like that. Uh, finally, when I do that, the table drop down, I'm going to go ahead and select RFID tag list and then refresh my field mappings down below. So what I have here is a partially configured setup. I, have, I don't have my reader configured yet, but the destination side, you can see I have that access database with the RFID tag list table selected. So this should be where all of the tags go that I capture by this reader. It's going to post it into that database. And you can see it's, again, this database table here that is uh, going to contain the tag information that's sent. Okay, so the last thing I need to do before I can actually start using this reader is actually just, uh, using the reader is configure the reader itself. So I'm going to click on this readers button and I'm going to add a reader to my configuration. In this case, I'm going to use a Zebra FX 7500. So I'm going to go ahead and select uh, Zebra. Now, just to mention, we support a wide variety of uh, manufacturers for RFID, uh, for UHF, HF, and now the Beacon technology here. Uh, so you'll, if you have a specific type of reader, you will just want to make sure you select that manufacturer. Otherwise, the setup is all the same. But you would just add the type of reader that you're looking to configure in your database. Um, again, you can look at this list for a large variety of the ones that we support. If you don't see the reader that you want to use in your uh, list, you can try LLRP, which stands for Low Level Reader Protocol. It's kind of an industry standard for communicating with fixed readers. Uh, so you can go ahead and try that or check the spec sheet on your reader. But for today, I'm going to go ahead and select this FX7500. Um, now, to ease the install within Clearstream, you can actually hit Find here. And this will find the Zebra reader that you have on your network that you'd like to use. So when you get the reader and plug it into your network, you may not even know the uh, IP address or host name. So you can use Clearstream just to find it. I happen to know it, so I'm going to go ahead and enter the host name here, uh, 0656C3. Um, so I'm going to type in that host name. You can also do the IP address. When you click out of that field, you'll know you successfully connected with your reader when you get a reader ID returned in this uh, column here. Okay, so I have my Zebra uh, FX7500. I'm going to go ahead and maybe name it that. This data is captured with each tag read. Um, I have one antenna hooked up to my reader, so I'm going to add one antenna, and I'm going to dial the power down a little bit just so I don't read every uh, tag in the area. I'm going to go ahead and call this one, say, Station 1. So 
So imagine maybe I'm setting up a, um, a workstation where I'm putting tags into a box and I want to scan everything in that box with this fixed reader. I can name the antenna so that this antenna sitting at that workstation is now being, that data is being captured with the tags that go over to the destination. Okay. So at this point, I could actually start this reader up and it'll actually start scanning tags and sending them to the database. I'll do that really quickly and I want to come back and make some changes here. But let me just show you. I'll save my project. Webinar 5XO. I'm going to jump to the start stop. I'm going to hit start here. This is powering up and start scanning tags and sending them to the database. You can see I read 16 tags there. And if I jump over to my database and hit refresh, you can see I just captured 16 tags into the database. I scanned them on antenna one with station one as the name, as well as I changed the reader name to be Zebra FX 7500 and I have my date timestamps here. So you can see I just scanned a whole bunch of tags into this database. So that's how easy it was to hook up a fixed RFID reader, UHF in this case, to a, des a database uh, on the right hand side from the configuration and start scanning tags into that. Now I have a bunch of duplicates here because I, I only configured this in the default. So there's one other thing I want to do um, for the demo today. I'm going to empty my database out. I'll refresh this count back to zero. I'm going to go back to configure and I want to control that this reader which has five tags sitting on top of the antenna. I only want to report those tags once to the database unless they go away and come back. So I'm going to go ahead to my readers. I'm going to go to the tag settings. I'm going to go to uh, change this timeout. I'm not going to go to too much detail since it is getting started with, but I'm going to go ahead and set up a timeout here to report tags visible. And I want to report tags again only after not visible. And you know what? I'm also going to report tags no longer visible. So let me sh just show you this behavior. I'm going to save my project and go back here. I reset the counts down to zero. The database is again empty. I'm going to hit start. And now this reports the five tags that are sitting on top of that antenna to the database. And watch, if I refresh this, I now have the five tags that are sitting there at station one, and I can see the tag event is tag visible. So I can see that's been reported to the database for that FX7500. I also now uh, set this up to report tags when they're no longer visible. I'm gonna take the five tags away from that antenna, and I set it up on a two second timeout. So after two seconds, it just reported an additional 10 tags to the database. So if I go back to the database and hit refresh, I can see those same five tags have now been reported that they're no longer visible at that workstation, at that same uh, workstation here. Okay, so Clearstream gives you the ability to control how and when tags are being reported to your database through just those tag events there uh, that I turned on. So I basically went from a setup where I'm sending every tag that gets sent, that's scanned by this reader into my database to controlling that I only want to report it based on it coming into view and then out of view. So if I take those same five tags again, and you guys can see this count 10. If I put this back over the antenna, it's gonna go up to 15. And there's my 15 tags. I go back to the database, I hit refresh, and now I have the tags are visible again at that same workstation. So you see, it's pretty cool. I'm capturing these items as they show up and leave from the workstation. Okay, so that's really quickly how you can get up and running with uh, the UHF reading. Um, and really configuring a simple setup where you have a zebra or whatever manufacturer you'd like to use, reader on the destination side, or, I'm sorry, on the source side, hooked up to your destination on the, uh, hooked up to your database on the destination side. Um, so what I thought I'd do next is actually talk about a new um, 5.0 feature that I mentioned in the webinar is the email reporting. So I'm gonna just reset some of my stuff here. I wanna clear out my database again of tags. Okay, and let's say I want to set up this reader to not only report to the database the tags that are read, but let's say I wanna use the same reader to send an email of the tags that are read. So every time somebody gets some tags to work at a workstation, it sends out an email so that somebody's notified that something had started. Now this could really be used for anything. Some of the cool demos we have set up in the, our uh, demo room here at our offices shows a chemical cabinet where you have um, volatile chemicals say in a cabinet that when they're taken out, you can report because they're no longer in that cabinet an email to somebody notifying that some chemical has been removed from the cabinet. And because it's an item level tracking through the RFID, you can see what chemical it was. 
Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that setup as well. So it's going to be very similar. I'm going to select RFID on the, the uh, source side. On the destination side, I'm going to select template. Uh, I'm going to select a report or basically what this generated data is going to look like in the email. So in my case here, I'm going to select something that's not going to be the prettiest for everybody here, but I'm going to select this JSON sample. So for any of you that are familiar with um, web services, this might kind of make sense to you if you were going to a, uh, a web server with this data. Um, now I need to configure an endpoint or where this data is being sent when this report is generated. So I'm going to go ahead and select the endpoints dialog here. I'll hit add. Similar to the RFID setup, I pick where I want to send this data. So you can do something like a URL, which would go to a web server, uh, an SMTP or simple mail transfer protocol or an email server, a printer or a socket. So I'm going to go ahead and select SMTP. And I'm going to configure my SMTP server here to be uh, gmail.com, port 587. I'm going to use my email address. Bear with me while I configure this out. And I always like to make note of, uh, well, one, I'm going quickly here, so if I mess up a typo or something, it's not going to send. I'm going to send this to myself at tracerplus.com. Uh, this is also 5.0, so if something doesn't work here, I, I do apologize beforehand. Uh, I'm going to say new tags scanned in the subject. Um, so I have here my SMTP server information set up as my endpoint, where I want this tag data sent. It's uh, Gmail, SMTP, and I'm sending it to myself, and my uh, subject for the email is new tag scanned. Or how about work started at workstation? Okay, I'm going to hit done. And now you can see this SMTP endpoint is now set up here as the sender. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. If you had a web server in here, you could also select that or whatever you may choose as the endpoint. Um, so for me, it's this SMTP endpoint. And I have that same reader hooked up to that destination. So what I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to save my project, hit go to the start stop. I'm going to start my reader again. Now you can see what happened there. Now it has two events down in the bottom. The process to database sent five tags and the process to email sent five tags as well. And I can hear my phone, I just got it uh, beep. And if I go to my email client here, I got, in this case, two, it sent them in two packets here, but I'll go ahead and open the email. And there's one of the tags, it came in a third one as well. There should be a total of five tags here in three, across three emails. But you can see here that it sent the tag data in a JSON format, don't mind what it looks like here, but that's completely customizable by you, um, into this email account and sent it over to uh, an end user. So you can control um, what it looks like as well as who receives that data for the tag information. So I did want to show you guys that because that's a pretty cool setup, being able to send out uh, tag information to a particular user from an RFID reader. And it can go to email, it could go to a URL as a web service where you format as JSON or you could even format as XML, it's up to you. Um, the email can also just be t simple text, so it doesn't look like that JSON format there, but it could just be simple text. So you get the information that you need to the person that's required to be notified of a tag being scanned or a tag leaving an area. Um, and again, that format of what it looks like in the email is completely customizable by you. Um, so you see I set the uh, subject to be work started at workstation and it's this format here, but this could be completely customized. So that's a new 5.0 feature that we will be releasing with the software when 5.0 is released. Uh, but we think that one's pretty neat in that you can do a lot of things with it and send your tag data to a lot of different areas uh, that you couldn't in the past. <clears throat> okay, so I stopped my reader. Let me reset my counts here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead now and actually uh, set up a Bluetooth um, gateway. So you can see how now you can add on to it running in the same install, both a Bluetooth gateway as well as a UHF reader in the same environment. And the configuration is very, very similar between the two. So I'm going to jump back over to our configure dialog. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to add a third process to my list, and I'm going to name this one uh, beacon scanning. Okay, and now the setup is going to be very much the same. Um, I'm going to go ahead on the source side, select RFID. Uh, on the destination side, I'm going to go back to that Clearstream RFID sample database uh, and the RFID tag list table. 
and I'll refresh these mappings. And before I actually do this, let me go ahead to the database. It did send an additional, an additional five tags there. I'm going to clear the database out again. Okay, and move it back over. And um, I just need to configure my, be my gateway now. So I'm going to go back into this reader's uh, dialog. And some of you may have noticed um, that there was a BLE beacon option here. So that's what you do for the beacon gateways. So rather than selecting one of the RFID scanning or this emulated reader, I'm going to <clears throat> excuse me, go ahead and select BLE Beacon, Bluetooth Lower Energy Beacon. Uh, just as it did for the FX7500, it went ahead and uh, added the beacon here. So let's call this um, Retailer A, uh, re you know, Acme Retailer, I don't know. So let's say we're doing a vendor managed inventory. We're now setting up the store with a beacon gateway at this location. Same thing as the uh, UHF readers. I'm going to go ahead and enter, in this case, the IP address. It, uh, I enter the IP address. It grabs the reader ID of that uh, gateway and places it in the reader ID field. So I know I have a successful communication to the gateway. And I'm going to do something similar here. I'm going to go ahead and maybe change the time. I'll leave the time out as 30 seconds and turn on report tag again only after not visible. So this setup here, just to elaborate on it a little bit more, these tag events are available both in UHF and RFID. This is how you control when and how a tag or a beacon is being reported to your database based on this timeout setting. So right now it's set to 30,000 milliseconds or 30 seconds. That basically tells the Clearstream to remember this beacon or tag for 30 seconds and keep it in memory so that we can act on it if it's no longer in memory after that time. And every time it's scanned, it'll put it in that memory again for those 30 seconds. So the idea behind that is if a beacon is scanned and sent to Clearstream, Clearstream remembers it for 30 seconds. If, if within that 30 seconds the beacon is scanned again, it re-ups that time to 30, another 30 seconds. So if that beacon leaves our Acme retailer location, it's no longer going to be pinging its data back to Clearstream. So Clearstream, after 30 seconds, is going to go ahead and report the tag uh, no longer visible. What if I turn it on here? Report tag no longer visible. So this gives us the ability to report a tag as it's at the location, but anytime it leaves, we can see in our database that it has now left that facility. Um, same with now you can mix and match this with the templates or that, that um, customized endpoint. You don't, you're not reporting, you don't have to report that beacon to a database, but you can say if this beacon leaves the facility, send an email to such and such with that uh, information, that beacon 123 has left the facility. So that's where you drive kind of all of your settings about when and how you want to report tags to your database. And you can also customize what they, they say. Uh, let's say uh, lawnmowers at store. and lawnmower sold. So you can customize what happens when the tag is seen versus not seen. You can say customers, uh, lawnmower is at the store, or lawnmower is, has been sold. So that's where you can control that. Um, so let me go ahead then. I have everything configured here. Uh, actually, no, I don't. <laughs> I need to select the type. So the slight difference between the UHF readers and the uh, beacons or that once you select the beacon, which is kind of universal to all the manufacturers, you want to select the device tab and select what type of gateway it is. So currently in the 5.0 release, we support Blue Cat gateways as well as Blue Epic gateways. I'm going to go ahead for this uh, install and set up a Blue Epic gateway. I also need to put the port that the reader, it, the gateway is configured to point to. By default, Blue Epics are uh, 10,002 and the Blue Cats is that 9400 port that you saw before. Um, down below, you can also configure, I'm going to leave these blank for now, but filtering of the beacon data. So this UUID, you might want to filter on. A UUID for a beacon is, is uh, something that you would encode to the beacon that would be kind of universal, universal to the beacons that you're using for a particular application. So in the case of a vendor managed inventory, you probably have the same UUID for every tag in the field so that you know as these beacons are being reported, which ones are the lawnmower, beacons versus which ones are some other beacon that are in the environment. You, so you would want to filter out the bad data there. Uh, we also will support iBeacon filtering. iBeacon supports something called a major and a minor number. So those give you more granularity in the 
what those tags are uh, affixed to. So miner could be which lawnmower, um, that type of thing. So you could also do filtering on that. Uh, but for now, I'm not going to do any filtering, just to show you the beacon data heading over to the server. Again, this is 5.0, so any issues, I apologize for. But I'm going to go ahead, and uh, the last thing I need to do is select the Acme Retailer Beacon Reader to point to my Clearstream RFID sample database. So it's the same exact configuration between that beacon and the other setups of the Zebra FX7500 that I've configured here. But for this sample, I have the Acme Retailer being sent to the RFID tag list. <coughs> The last thing I need to do is really just save my project, jump, jump over to start, stop, pick this beacon, hit start on there, and now you can see a new line item in my data in my uh, reader activity here. Acme Retailer has sent me 32 beacons. And if I go over to the database and hit refresh, here are my 32, in this case, unique beacons with all of the data that's associated to them, as well as any of the other stuff that we've configured at the uh, in Clearstream. You can see lawnmower at store. So again, just to rehash on those beacons, what's cool about them is almost all the gateways can be configured to send their tag data to something, um, some location. So the setup is really on the reader side, just configure what it's pointed to. And then as long as you have Clearstream running on say one, on a web server, it then is reporting all of the tags that are at that location by just plugging the device in because the device gets plugged in and starts sending of the beacons that it's read to that location. So as far as Clearstream is concerned, it doesn't care what beacons come online or what gateways come online. That tag data is just all coming to it. And Clearstream is receiving that tag data and pushing it to some uh, location that you've kind of defined to uh, where you want it to go. So if we were to actually lose some of these beacons, which we probably won't right now, you would see lawnmower sold as the tag event if it left that facility and is no longer pinging its location uh, to the destination. Okay, so this, you can see the setup for the beacon data is actually very much similar to RFID, and you can mix and match these, uh, these um, technologies within the same environment. I will go ahead and turn on the Zebra FX7500 again, and you can see now in this same database table, I'm getting beacon information as well as my five RFID tags that are being tracked at these stations. If I were to take these five tags off of my antenna, um, I'm going to again get an additional five tags sent to my database uh, when they leave. And if I hit refresh, I now have those five tags again having left the area. And I picked up some more beacons. Did they, oh, look, so we got some beacons that were uh, probably in the area that were a little faint and they've lost now. Um, they're, they haven't pinged within the 30 seconds, so they've been reported as lawnmower sold. Uh, so, and again, that's something you can control about that timeout time. As long as you get a ping once a day, it will be maintained in the database as being at that location. Okay. And lastly, if I stop everything here, I can show you I got another email. Got another email here. In this case, all five tags came in that one email, and you can see the EPC values that were scanned. These, these will match exactly what you saw in the database. Uh, this is just in what's called a JSON format, JavaScript object notation, for anybody that wanted to know. So um, that's kind of what I wanted to show you with the Beacon technology. Just to briefly touch on some of the other uh, features of Clearstream, because uh, I know this is getting started with webinar, but we kind of wanted to show you a lot about the beacon stuff. <clears throat> um, there's a lot of different control you have with these readers, how and when they're scanning for tags. So I've been setting everything up as continuous scan mode, but you can scan based on an interval or daily. You can also scan based on general purpose input triggers. So whether or not a uh, motion sensor is tripped, you can turn a scanner on. Now that's not typically something that's supported in a beacon environment, but on UHF scanners. Antennas, you can control the power level like you saw here. I bumped the uh, power down to 20 uh, decibels here, uh, but you can control the power level of your scanning. The tag settings allow you to define how and when tags are reported to the destination. So you can report when they're not visible or not and things like that. You can configure on supported readers uh, output ports. So you can power up lights and buzzers and anything you can think of on these readers um, that can be driven by the activity within Clearstream. So maybe every time a tag is scanned, power up a light at the location. Um, if a tag that's scanned that's not supposed to, 
power up an alarm so you can um, notify somebody of an issue. Uh, custom fields, I won't get into much today, but this allows you to define your own custom fields to Clearstream. Uh, so by default, uh, the readers capture these information, these bits of information in the field mappings, like an EPC value, a, a date, timestamp, and reader name. You can add your own custom fields if you needed to to a reader. So every time a tag is scanned, you get custom information sent to your database as well. And finally, the device tab. This is specific to the device type that you've selected. So this will be a little bit different per reader, but gives you kind of some of the um, exposes some of the features of, of the hardware. Um, that might make it a little bit different than other readers uh, is exposed here. So you saw like on the beacon side, you pick what type of gateway where uh, it should be listening and things like that. Um, so I think that's all I wanted to show you here today. Um, some of the other new things, we have a copy feature in 5.0 for both the process as well as the device configuration and so on. But um, I think that's everything I wanted to show you today for getting started with uh, Clearstream. I hope all of this kind of made sense to you guys. Um, I will jump back over to the PowerPoint at this point. And I think the next thing is the question and answer period. Yeah, Howie, this is Brad, and uh, it looks like we have Brad. a couple questions. Um, first thing I just want to say is uh, please uh, feel free to, f I don't think we have all our social media here, but follow us on YouTube um, or subscribe to us. All of our videos posted, we do some cool stuff in our solution lab. So when we see new technology we want to talk about, we quickly throw up videos. So it's 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 really powerful stuff if you uh, are in this area of work. Um, and then also follow the same on Tracer Plus. And um, we have forums. We, we try to do as much as we can with education for our customers. We try to communicate in the way that you guys want to communicate. So uh, there's a lot of stuff out there that you can join and follow. Um, and then we'll email you as well if, on the big stuff. So uh, first question, in terms of total cost of ownership, what will the ideal solution for a supply chain automation, UHF, RFID, or BLE? And that's a pretty open-ended question, um, depending on what you're supplying. I just look at it from the, uh, the point of what you're trying to do or what you're tagging. If, um, if you're looking at a, a, a high volume and um, item level tagging and you're not doing much more than a choke point, you're gonna save tremendously by going with UHF RFID solution. So with UHF RFID, we see folks doing things as low as cost $20, $30, and they'll put a tag on it so they can speed up their processes and make their counts more accurate and uh, follow through things through a factory. Um, where we really see the beacons are in areas where you're not tagging a tremendous amount of items and they're high value or of importance to you. So like Howie said, maybe, um, for liability purposes, you want to make sure a forklift uh, is tracked, you have uh, coordinates on it at all times, you want to know where an employee is, you want to make sure certain employees don't go into other areas. Um, a beacon might be a really easy thing to set up because the hardware cost is relatively low um, versus maybe the UHF RFID if you had to set up multiple readers in different areas. But again, if it comes down to tagging a lot of items and um, you know, they're low dollar items, you're probably looking at a UHF RFID solution. And that's what we see in a lot of the supply chain management for your more common goods. Um, what's the next one? How much storage space is on a beacon? How much information will it hold? With, with that, I will turn it over to Howie because I know this is a bit of a moving target and everybody's doing different things and the technology yeah, this is, is evolving a quickly. Yeah, this is a good question, and it kind of even um, follows suit with RFID tags. A lot of UHF RFID tags you, you find have different memory um, bank sizes. So uh, some t tags have a user memory bank on them. Some tags don't. Some tags have large user memory banks. Um, so you can store different amounts of data. A lot of the beacons, uh, like the iBeacon standard, it has a relatively small uh, memory footprint because it's really meant to just ping out its identifier. <clears throat> Um, so it's got, it, it tries to reduce the battery impact for every time it's transmitting uh, data. Um, so for iBeacons, I think most of them are about 32 bytes of data, which is, includes that UUID, a major number, a minor number, which then can be used to identify an item level, down to an item level. And finally, there's a, uh, one thing I didn't mention in the webinar today, there's a uh, manufacturer encoded value for uh, <coughs> RSSI value from one meter, depending on what the manufacturer measures from one meter from their tag. 
And that's used to allow you to do distancing from a tag. Since when you get the reading from the tag, you know that this tag is supposed to report at some power level from one meter. If you see it at a different power level, you can calculate then the distance you are from that tag, which is something that's cool with our um, REST API. You can build in the ability to do kind of that triangulation and see where a tag is. Um, there are other tags uh, that do have more data. Um, they're typically lower on the lower end, but there are things like a different Eddystone formats that can allow you to encode URLs is one common one, so that when you scan a beacon, it can direct you to a web page. Uh, there's also a TLM uh, Eddystone format that has uh, stores different sensor data from the tag. So different tags will have different um, sensors on them uh, that then can be stored in the tag so that you can retrieve that uh, through the scan as well, but it's pinged out kind of in small packets. So most tags do have small tag packets. However, there are custom tags that can allow you to do other things um, that can store different uh, bits of data, maybe temperature and things like that, into the memory bank of the tag. However, for a full le list of that, um, really we'd probably want to talk to you about what your requirements are and then see what's available. Um, because with the beacons, there's you know different varieties, different standards that are out there. Uh, and then just different memory bank require, um, uh, specs per tag. So if you want to reach out to us after the webinar, we can kind of talk about what you're looking to do and see what tag might be available to, to cover all of that. Okay, I have a next question here is, do you still need Clearstream installed locally or it can be completely cloud hosted? Well, Clearstream could technically always have, I'm um, sorry, Brad, you're going to say something. No, I thought Clearstream. I was on, on mute, but. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Clearstream could have always been hosted completely in the cloud. Uh, it just you know, takes extra steps to get that to happen. Um, you need communication from the cloud back to your RFID readers uh, in an accessible way that would allow you to um, install it completely in the cloud. Uh, now, the reason we're mentioning clouds today is because a lot of the gateways, uh, like I had said, they can send their tag information to some IP address. Um, that it doesn't really know about. So as long as it has an internet connection to that IP address, it can just ping out the beacons that it's reading to that location. So in that case, you can create very easily a completely cloud-based Clearstream install. You just install Clearstream on that cloud server and then have all of the gateways pointing back to that. And then Clearstream doesn't need to communicate to any of the gateways at any of the facilities that you have installed because all of the gateways are pointed back to the same Clearstream server. Um, so it can be completely cloud-based in that situation, and it's very easy. Now, that in the beacon environment is typically how the gateways are configured. Uh, with some of the UHF RFID readers, that's going to be a little bit more difficult to accomplish because those are kind of controlled by Clearstream in most cases. Uh, you have to have a communication channel back from the server to the reader. There are some readers, uh, FIG is one of them, that supports a mode for UHF similar to the beacon gateways where it's notifying the server of tags that it's read. So that could be an option in a UHF environment to make it completely cloud-based. Um, but to, yeah, so to answer your question, yes, it can be completely cloud-based. Uh, in some installs, it might be a little bit more difficult to get it to that, uh, depending on you know, IT requirements and things like that. And this is Brad, I'll just add a little bit of that on a higher level. Our goal has always been and always will be to make our systems as flexible for users as possible. So we've seen with uh, fixed RFID stall installs, you know, server access locally um, is sometimes an issue with big organizations. So it may be easier to demo on a cloud. Uh, what we see with the beacon is it's really easy to do a remote install, i.e. why we're pushing on vendor managed inventory. Um, we're actually offering hosted solutions on the uh, Clearstream platform in the near future and doing it um, for special customers as of now. Um, again, because we're, we're learning and as the world evolves or our industry evolves, we're noticing um, our customers more and more open to that SaaS model or that hosted model. With that being said, we still have customers that are extremely concerned about security and will only r run in a local mode because their data, and, and especially in some government applications, can't even go outside of their organization. It can't even go onto the internet. So uh, our goal, again, is to offer the flexibility that depending on how your organization works 
and what you need to do and the resources you have in hand, well, you're going to try to make it as easy as possible for you to deploy a solution. So whether it be on the cloud or local, um, we're driving to that type of solution. Okay. So what else do we have here, Howie? Go for the next question is, is Clearstream capable of writing data to the tags or just supports reading data from the tag? Uh, good question. Clearstream has always meant to be, has always been a passive application where it's running in the background. So writing to tags uh, isn't kind of a simple setup in that you don't really know which tags you're going to be writing to. There's no interface for that. Um, so it really was meant for always reading and streaming that data to some destination. Um, we've done a little bit of kind of work with that REST API is allowing you to take a web page, kind of creating a web form to write to tags. Um, that's something that I don't know if it's going to be within our Clearstream 5.0 release. Um, if there is some use case that you have that you'd like to reach out to us and talk to us about, um, you know, we definitely like to hear that feedback. Uh, we've just been kind of taking a look at that as a new option for Clearstream to basically set that RFID type to be a destination as opposed to simply a source. Um, but that's something that we kind of look for feedback on maybe from you. So if you want to reach out to us after the webinar, we'd be glad to kind of talk about your use case there. Um, uh, and then there's a big, sorry, go ahead. big question here. Is there a location that you can download the RFID sample uh, system ODBC database and access to see where RFID data is importing into the database? Can you link different antennas to send data to different tables to access? What is the tag session on the TAMIS page? Do you have fixed LF RFID readers that will work with ClearStream? Do you sell it? So um, I'll, I'll handle the last one. Um, we handle HF, LF, and UHF through the FIG API. So um, we work or are compatible with all the FIG readers at a low level. And um, we're doing more and more with the LF and HF with them. Um, and again, if you know you have a manufacturer you prefer, we constantly uh, you know do go directly in and we handle most of those manufacturers directly that you can think of that are the common ones. Um, I'll let you take over on the other parts of that question, Howie. Sure, you have a question here. The first question is, is there, is there a location that you can download the RFID sample system da ODBC database in access to see where RFID da data is importing into the database? Uh, the easiest way to do that would actually just be to install Clearstream and I can show you where that um, database is located really quickly. If you go to your C drive after installing Clearstream, and then go Program Files x86, PTS, Clearstream RFID 4, and then there's a data folder in there, and it's this Clearstream RFID samples database. So you could just double click on that to open it up and look at the, the data, and if you double click on it, you'll see kind of what I showed you before with the, uh, the database here. Um, so that's, how, that's the easiest way to get that. I don't think we have it on our website anywhere, but if you download Clearstream, run the installer, you'll see it in that folder. Uh, you had a follow-up to that. Can you link different antennas to send data to different tables in Access? Yep, you can send, um, like I showed you, I use this FX7500 to go to a database to an email. You can have it go to different tables as well in that same database or in different databases because you, you can use that as a source of data in as many of these as you'd like. Um, you can also then set up on each source side, you can set up source filtering. So if you only wanted antenna one data, to go to an antenna one table, you would just set up a filter that said something like antenna equals uh, one, and then maybe in the two email, I would set up another filter called antenna equals two. So now anything scanned by antenna one is going to the database, anything scanned by antenna two is going to this email. Um, you got another follow-up to that. What is the tag session on the antenna pages? The tag session is an EPC Gen 2 spec for UHF RFID reading. Um, it defines how often and how quickly a tag should report back to an antenna when it's being inventoried. Um, session zero means report constantly. If, it, if you're inventoried, respond with your um, identifier. Session one is something like between one and two seconds. So it's gonna limit, it's gonna reduce the amount of time a tag is reported to a, an antenna while it's sitting in front of that antenna. And then two and three are the same. This is something, I think it's greater than two seconds. This means that if a tag is sitting in front of an antenna, it's not gonna report itself other than once. Um, and it's not 100% it's not reliable, but it's gonna report itself once while it's sitting in front of there. And then you have to move it away from the tag uh, so that that session um, discharges. And then when you move it back into the field of view of the antenna, it'll report itself again. So it really limits the amount of times that a tag is reported to your antenna. 
Um, there's another question here uh, asking about really what, and I'm not going to get into names, uh, there's a manufacturer out there of readers who actually makes some software that can be compared to uh, Clearstream and they're asking what the differences are. And simply put, um, we've heard from our resellers and our customers, ours is a lot easier to configure, but a lot more powerful. Bigger than that, I think, is we're not, uh, we're very agnostic when it comes to what hardware we're using. So, um, you know, we're not locking you into a particular piece of hardware or even a particular piece of technology. Our whole goal here is to uh, really latch on to the IoT uh, technology coming out every day and offer our customers all sorts of ways of streaming useful data into their systems. Um, so I would just put it that simply. Uh, we're, we're just hopefully a lot easier to use, a lot more flexible, and a lot more open to a new technology, not just our technology. It's uh, often tough to to latch on to a hardware manufacturer's software because it seems to work a lot better on their hardware than or only on their hardware. Um, another question here, why did you decide to add BLE within the RFID type versus creating a new type? Um, the RFID type there might change. Uh, the reason we did that is because a lot of the settings we're hoping are very similar between both the UHF side as well as the beacon side. Uh, if you notice, even if you select RFID, you, you can configure an HF scanner as, um, there as well. So we really thought that a lot of the features that we're going to be supporting are going to be um, across the board between the different technologies. So therefore, it can all be in the same dialogue to configure each one of those devices. Um, we've been kind of toying around with playing, uh, changing the, the, the label of that to something like devices or IoT or something so that you know you're just configuring a device that now we don't really care what that device is, it's gonna stream that same data that it's receiving in Clearstream to wherever you'd like to send that data. So we'd like to keep that a little bit more flexible than simply RFID. Um, however, in this build that I'm showing you today, uh, it's still labeled as RFID. So it probably may have confused some of you out there, but the RFID really, even though beacons are an identification in by radio technology, um, it might not be as obvious that that's where you'd be configuring that. But that's something that we're still looking at as far as how we should phrase that and, and have that kind of design. To be really candid, it becomes uh, an interesting thing when the name of the software is Clearstream RFID. Uh, <laughs> we're really surprised by all the different types of technology. Our customers see the value of this database connectivity and streaming it to the systems they have. So they really want to extend their systems and there's all sorts of things they're asking us. So. Um, we have some big questions to answer in the future of the branding of the product. Um, with that being said, I don't see, uh, oh, when is 5.0 release? Yeah, there you go, Howie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think right now we're looking at the end of September. Uh, it is pretty far in development at the moment. Um, there are a couple of other um, gateway devices that we'd like to get support in before that release has been completed. Um, so we will be looking at that. We will be keeping everybody posted on the release for that. You can also, if you'd like and you wanted to try some of these features, we can get you a build to go ahead and test everything. You can see here today, I have a, this is a fully installed build from development that has Beacon technology for Blue Cats and Blue Epic, as well as all of the email support built into it. So if you'd like to get an early release of that, we probably could provide you an installer. Um, you just want to reach out to us over here to get that link and we can get it up on our website. Um, you know, just as long as you're aware that it's going to be an early release. Um, so luckily I didn't run into any issues on the webinar today. However, uh, if you do, we, you know, appreciate the feedback on, um, on what you guys see out there. Yeah, and uh, I, I would really encourage everybody to, um, if you have more questions, quickly put them up there, but uh, reach out to whoever you're, uh, salesperson is at a reseller or directly with the PTS team if you are a reseller. Um, these tools are all going to be available on or the video, should be available within a week or two. Um, I don't think there are any major gotchas in this one, Howie, so we should have a lot of editing to do. Um, but it'll be up on our YouTube channel on Clearstream RFID. Just uh, YouTube search that and we should pop up at the top. And you can subscribe to us. There's a bunch of videos on there. Um, also subscribe to Tracer Plus, a lot of stuff up there as well. Sometimes we get confused where to put the videos up if we're talking about something that's just maybe a new UHF RFID printer or tag that we're excited about um, or a beacon tag in the future um, since it will be supported by both uh, Tracer Plus and Clearstream. 
Um, but again, feedback, feedback, feedback. We're always uh, trying to improve these webinars and our training tools and the software. Um, it can be negative. We're okay. We have thick skin. We are located in Long Island, New York, where it's uh, common to have pretty thick skin and expect others to have thick skin. So please uh, give us the feedback we need to improve. Um, it's a tough task sometimes putting these webinars together. Howie talks as an engineer. Um, a lot of us talk on a much higher level. So, uh, you know, sometimes it feels like your head may explode for certain folks and other folks might be upset that it's not technical enough. Um, so we're, tr we're trying our best. Uh, please give us the feedback we need to improve. Um, anything else, Howie, you want to add? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I do appreciate everybody hopping on the call. I did want to actually mention one thing because I've been reminded of this a couple times too. Mention to you guys that today actually we are having a Clearstream open office. So if, and as we always encourage you to download and try the software, if you have any questions, if you guys would like to hop on that, um, especially if you wanted to, any more, to elaborate any more on the new features of Clearstream, uh, that is at 2 p.m. Eastern today. So if you wanted to log in, take a look at our website, it should be up there for the registration link. Um, just did want to mention that one. And for the resellers on the call who are also reselling our Tracer Plus software, please uh, hop over to the Tracer Plus website. Um, we have some new pricing options available that are kind of exciting, one including uh, we have a Tracer Plus suite that includes all the products, and uh, we're starting to introduce uh, subscription pricing. It's rolling out slowly, but we'll give uh, the BYOB folks a lot more options so um, they can light up or light off uh, PDAs at a, a rapid rate. Anyway, with that being said, I think we're going to shut it down unless there's uh, oh, there's one more question. Yeah, there's one more question here that I can go ahead and answer. Uh, can you read RFID out. tag in ASCII format in Clearstream? Uh, yes, you can. However, there are still a couple of caveats to that. Uh, ASCII format is typically used to encode a tag uh, as human readable. So if you wanted to write you know, ACME code of the tag, you would encode that as ASCII characters to the tag. And then when you scan it, rather than seeing some big long hex string, you would see ACMECO. Um, that in Clearstream can be converted from the hex that's stored on the tag to ACMECO within Clearstream and reported to the database as ACMECO, not you know whatever the uh, hex values of that are. Um, however, it needs to be coded in a certain way. The ASCII characters need to start at the um, zero index of the tag. So it can't start with null characters because Clearstream when it parses from, uh, parses into ASCII, it's looking for a null character to know when to stop, which is that zero, zero. So if it starts with zero, zero on the tag, it doesn't think there's any data, it doesn't think there's any ASCII data, human readable data, so it doesn't convert the tag. So it just has to have the ASCII at the front of the tag as opposed to the end, and Clearstream can therefore then uh, in decode that into your database. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah. So with that, uh, if there are no more questions, um, you can still send them over if you'd like, but uh, we do have our contact information up on the screen here, so please feel free to reach out to us with any questions you guys have, uh, as well as Brad mentioned feedback, feedback on the webinars, on the software, on anything like that. We always encourage you guys to send that over, uh, especially for these webinars to kind of drive you know, what you guys want to see, um, as well as some of our LinkedIn and Facebook. And please join the open offices uh, for Tracer Plus. We have them twice a week. I think Clearstream we have them once a week. Um, it's, you're going to talk directly to engineers, so it won't be a salesperson, and you can learn about best practices, how to uh, solve certain problems. It's a really great uh, resource that we make available to uh, trial customers and new customers and our existing customers that they can get in direct connection with our top engineers, which is kind of unusual. Not many companies are doing that, and we, we just feel it's uh, – a great uh, value to our customers to have that type of uh, connection. Anyway, with that being said, I think we're going to shut this down. We appreciate everybody's uh, participation. Yeah, thanks everybody. Have a great rest of your uh, day or evening. Bye-bye. Right.